what happens to young girls who become homeless and at risk of poverty, prostitution, and abuse? Where do they turn for help? Let's talk about it. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Michael Hunter, and this is Elizabeth Atkins. Every week on My Healthy Mind, we talk openly about difficult issues that can impact our mental health and our wellness. We discuss a variety of topics that people struggle with on a daily basis, but are sometimes too afraid to talk about. And our guests include people who are willing to tell their personal stories about how they've overcome challenging problems, like mental illness, abuse, and addiction. And by sharing those private struggles, our guests inspire open, honest conversation about these subjects so that we can answer questions that you, our viewers, may have. Mm -hmm. We also invite experts and experienced professionals to talk about resources that can help you and people you know begin a journey toward better health. Elizabeth, what are we going to talk about on today's show? Today, Michael, we're talking about girls who are homeless or at risk of life on the streets. And we're going to be interviewing Amy Good. She's CEO of Alternatives for Girls. That's an organization in southwest Detroit that's been helping homeless and at-risk girls for more than 25 years. We'll also talk with Melody Moore, who is a special projects manager at Alternatives for Girls, also known as AFG. Mm -hmm. She'll tell us about Emma's Angels, which is a new program for girls in middle school. It's named for Emma Zetterberg, who is the wife of Red Wings captain Henrik Zetterberg. Together, they've established the Zetterberg Foundation that's helping alternatives for girls as well as families throughout Metro Detroit. So please join us after the break to learn more about these programs that are keeping girls safe and helping them break the cycle of poverty and abuse. Please stay with us. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of our mountain tea. To making history. This close to changing the world. We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease. Ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Berger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Stress. Depression and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. It's towards the sixth court date, um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Today we're pleased to have as our guest, Amy Good, CEO and President of Alternatives for Girls in Southwest Detroit. Welcome, Amy, to My Healthy Mind. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Amy, we know that homelessness is an epidemic, but there's that population that you're assisting, girls. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got started? Sure. 
Sure. Um, yeah, we serve homeless and high-risk girls and young women, and there is a great need and a great demand for help for that population. We started as an idea in 1985. We were incorporated in 1987. We started as a neighborhood response in southwest Detroit to a really alarming increase in the number of girls and young women that were out there, that were on the streets, sleeping in cars, sleeping in the park, uh, you know, involved in street-based prostitution, increasingly involved in gangs, even being pressed into prostitution by family members, and also girls who were just not going to school, little girls. The neighborhood came together, decided this is a situation that we are not going to tolerate. We need services for these girls. Um, we looked for money, didn't find any money, actually. We'd start, we just decided we're gonna keep on moving forward. We started a program on the basis of volunteers. Um, a girl came to our door actually 28 years ago in very cold January day and we decided we're starting today. We opened the shelter with volunteers and have grown a great deal since that time. Amy, I went to your website and I watched some of the heart-wrenching videos of these girls' testimonials about their mothers selling them into prostitution or being homeless and the police officer bringing them to your doorstep. And you're sending them to school, you're enabling them to finish homework and go to college and graduate and become something really powerful. How do you do that? Sure. Well, we do it in three ways. There's our shelter for homeless girls and young women ages 15 to 21. Some have children of their own, some don't. They are, they are homeless on their own without their family members, and they're not being served by any other system, by the foster care system, by the juvenile justice system, by the mental health system. They have no place to go. We take them in, we help them get their education back on track, get a job, and when they're ready, they've saved up money, we help them move into their own home or a shared home. And that's when the really important work begins and they start setting down roots, building community, building relationships with friends who are going to support their positive aspirations. So that's those who are homeless. And then we, we drive around the streets, we work with girls and women of all ages who are on the street, involved in the sex industry, many of them victims of trafficking. We do crisis intervention on the street, we help them uh, by in, we invite them to come to support groups, a range of services, and then our prevention program, we help girls who are just living in Southwest Detroit with their families, going to school, we help them stay in school. And when you're doing that, you obviously are working with volunteers. Yes. What about safety when those, with, with those programs yeah. when you're driving around on the streets? How does that work? We have a stellar safety record. Our staff and volunteers are very well trained. We are well known in the community. We're well known throughout the streets. Um, and police are very supportive of us as well, as are all of our neighbors and those who, who see us doing our work day in and day out. Amy, can you please share with us a success story? I can imagine that the girls must be very traumatized after what they've experienced on the streets and then to walk through your door. Please share how you take them from that trauma to a life of success. Sure, and of course there are many, many stories. And, and the girls and women that we serve get all the credit. They're the ones who really do the work. You know, we're happy to support them. I'll tell you the story of one young woman who I'll call Kelly, not her real name. Uh, Kelly was on a street corner just outside a community center when a predator selected her as, as a target and that began a nightmare. She was sexually exploited. She was raped by multiple people that very day and she was held captive for the following five years. Sexually exploited on a daily basis for profit for him and his partners, I suppose. Um, she got to the point where she had an opportunity, she took advantage of it, she found help, she got to alternatives for girls, uh, she got to the point where she was able to be so strong as to testify against him and her, the other abductors and exploiters. She, her testimony, the prosecuting attorney made clear, was what made the difference and sent them to jail. She's since graduated from our program, um, achieved her certified nurse's assistant um, certification, and is doing very well. Mm. Very courageous. That's awesome. And alternatives for girls, in general, when we think about the success stories, what's the underlying definition of success when someone moves from what to what? Oh, 
That's a great question, and it's very different in our different programs. Uh, in our prevention program, success is staying in school, keeping your grades up, and staying on pace with always your eyes on the prize of graduating from high school and education beyond. In our street program, success can be taking the tiniest steps to take care of yourself from day one to day two. Minimizing risk, even when you're continuing to engage in some risk behaviors, sometimes the baby steps are what's critical on a given day. Amy, we have to take a short break, but after our break, we'll get to hear more from Amy Good, the CEO of Alternatives for Girls, and she's going to talk more about their programs as well as an exciting new project that they're launching to prevent girls from ending up on the streets. We'll be right back. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Towards the sixth court date, um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. We're continuing our discussion with Amy Good, CEO of Alternatives for Girls, about how they're helping girls stay off the streets, excel in school, and go to college. Amy, can you please tell our viewers about some of the programs that you have? Sure, um, and in particular, our, our prevention program, speaking of helping them stay in school and go to college, uh, is, is uh, critical. Uh, and uh, very powerful. We work with girls who live in Southwest Detroit with their families and we help them stay in school. We help their families help them stay in school and we do that through a wide range of support services. We use mentors and tutors and our staff provide uh, very structured after school programs everything from adventure programming where we take them on outings they get challenged in different ways kayaking and skiing and even some international travel um, with a special grant and we do a summer program many many ways that we use to keep them engaged with sticking with their studies being interested and excited by their studies and aiming to excel stay in school and excel and aim for college when it comes to the success of Alternatives for Girls, do you have students, I'll call them students because you say graduate, that come back and help afterwards and with such a prevalent need, how do you handle the waiting list or the demand? Oh. Yeah, we, we do. Um, we're very fortunate to have a number of our graduates come and help us in, in a few different capacities. For example, in our summer program, um, we use youth leaders, uh, and, and it's very important for the, the older girls to act as role models for the younger girls. Now, the, the older girls are still participating in our program, but they are important leaders, peer leaders for those their same age, and role models for those the younger girls who are coming up. We also have staff members who've come through the program, graduated from the program, gone to college and come back. Um, you're right, there is 
the, a demand for our services always exceeds our capacity, always, always. Um, we operate on a first come, first serve basis. We try to prioritize those who are most in need of our services. Um, but yeah, there is definitely a much greater demand than our capacity. And now you're launching a new program. Can you tell us about that, please? Yes, we're very excited about this, this program. Um, we've known for a while that despite our intensive interventions and the wonderful work done by the girls and their families in our program, the, the girls and young women continue to face challenges, not just getting into college, but staying in college. And we want to make sure that they are as prepared as possible. Um, we did some research. We identified um, a, a, an evidence-based model, an asset-building model that's found to be effective in lots of different places within the United States and beyond. Um, and together with Emma and Henrik Zetterberg, um, and the Zetterberg Foundation, um, who have committed to partnering with us, we're launching a program. And in honor of Emma Zetterberg, we're calling it Emma's Angels, um, where we are, we are enrolling all of the 31 middle school girls in our prevention program. In this program, they and their family sign a contract. They will deposit money every month, and in some, when they're able, every week, might be as little as $5 each deposit. We are matching it. Um, in a college savings account. And they will be saving money every week, every month, throughout high school, along with very structured, specific support from us to prepare for college academically, culturally, as well as financially. And the Zetterbergs um, have let us know they're going to help us with an initial deposit for each girl. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today on My Healthy Mind. Alternatives for Girls is doing a great job. We really appreciate what you're doing for these girls. Thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here. When we return after our short break, we look forward to hearing more about Emma's Angels from Alternatives for Girls Special Projects Manager, Melody Moore. And she'll introduce us to one of the newly enrolled participants. We'll see you after the break. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. Towards the sixth court date, um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. Tyler, everything okay? Yeah, Grandma, everything's fine. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. With us now is Melody Moore, the Special Projects Manager at Alternatives for Girls. She's overseeing a new prevention program for middle school girls in Southwest Detroit. Melody, a few minutes ago, your CEO, Amy Good, told us about your many prevention programs and the new program, Emma's Angels, which you're starting thanks to the generosity of Emma Zetterberg and her husband, Red Wings Captain Henrik Zetterberg, who are contributing to the program. Can you tell us about Emma's Angels, please? Sure. So we have a program that's geared toward the middle school students in our prevention after school program. 
there are three components to it. One includes workshops, workshops for youth and workshops for the parents. The workshops for youth are geared to academically prepare the, the youth for high school and college. So we'll be doing activities, um, to tutoring, and doing things to really help them prepare academically. We'll also participate in college site visits. We'll also have financial literacy workshops for the youth. Now workshops for the parents include financial literacy as well, but then we'll also walk the parents through the college application process. How do you select a college? What are some of the things my, my child should be looking for? How do you, I complete the financial aid application? Now the other two components of the program includes mentoring. So each youth in this project will be paired with a mentor. We're asking that the mentors commit at least 10 hours per month working with the youth, really helping them stay on top of their homework and answering any questions and helping to do career planning and college planning. The third component is the financial aspect, and that's where it comes into the, the family and the youth saving money, and then also alternatives for girls matching a portion of those savings. And you brought one of your new Emma's Angels with you today. Will you introduce yes. us, please? Sure. I would like to introduce you to Yaritza Campos. She is in the sixth grade. She's 11 years old, and she's a student at Hope of Detroit Academy in Detroit. Welcome, Yaritza. Welcome, Yaritza. Tell us why you're excited about Emma's Angels. I'm excited about Emma's Angels because it'll, it'll take me through step by step for college and it'll give me money for all my books, all my college tours, and it'll show me how to go to college and help me with all my um, supplies and everything. Yaritza, can you tell us some of the specific activities that you do at Alternatives for Girls as part of Emma's Angels? Um, in the program, we have snacks, like some, and then we do our homework. We have homework time until like five, until workshop. And then when we do the workshop, we say what we feel. We say our name if girls don't know. So we, we say our feelings, basically. So what are your big plans for your future? Well, my big plans are when I'm going to college, I want to go to Wayne State for my bachelor's, and when I'm done with my bachelor's, I want to go to UFD to study law. Excellent, so you want to be a lawyer? Yes. Wonderful, and are these things, most 11 year olds aren't saying bachelor's degree, <laughs> so are these things that you've learned about at Alternatives for Girls? And, and Alternatives for Girls, like I learned, I learned them too, and also at home by my mom, my parents, and family members. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And, and she's saying she's learned at home with her mom and parents, but you said that that cultural acclimation has to happen often. Tell us a little bit about that and what you meant when you said that. Sure, we have found that sometimes the young ladies graduate high school and they attend college, but they don't have the supports that they may need to be able to remain in college. We found that what, what may often happen is that because they are behind, they may have to record, they may not place in college level classes. So they have to take remedial classes once they get to college. And it's a different environment because you don't have people calling you, asking you, why didn't you attend class today? Where's your homework? I'll give you an extra credit assignment like you do in high school. So that's the cultural acclimation process that we're referencing. So we want to make sure that the young ladies are prepared academically so when they're, they don't have to take remedial college classes because you don't receive credit for it, but you still have to pay the full price for the classes. And do you find a little bit that some of the parents, because they may or may not have gone to college, don't really know how to navigate and help them so Alternatives for Girls and Emma's Angels is able to fill that gap. Absolutely, and that's why we're also offering the workshops for the adults, because not all of the parents have attended college. So we want to make sure that we're assisting the parents as we're assisting the youth as well. Thank you, Yuritza. Thank you, Melody, for joining us today. We really appreciate all that you're doing, and we really appreciate the benefits of Emma's Angels. Thank you. Thank you. Grab your pencils and papers. After this break, we'll review the resources mentioned on today's show. We are this close. We're this close. We are this close. Of our mountain to making history. This close to changing the world. 
We are this close. This close. This close to making sure no child suffers a crippling disease ever again. This close. We are this close to ending polio. To ending polio. All we need is you. Is you. This close. If we don't act now, we may lose this chance forever. Help Rotary make history at endpolionow.org. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. We want to thank Amy Good, CEO of Alternatives for Girls, who opened our eyes to the many ways that this organization is working to change the lives of homeless and high-risk girls in Detroit. We also appreciate AFG's Special Projects Manager, Melody Moore, for giving us details about Emma's Angels, a new exciting program for middle school girls, such as our guest, Yaritza Campos. The generosity of the Zetterberg Foundation is giving these girls a great start to prepare and save for college. And I hope you have your pencil and paper so you can take down all of the resources we've just shared. They're on our website, MyHealthyMind.com. And if you know a girl in crisis, please call the AFG Crisis Line at 888-AFG-3919. That's 888-234-3919. Elizabeth, what did you get from today's show? I got the fact that someone can be traumatized and living on the streets and find help and get the care that they need to live a successful life. And that requires healing, that requires a lot of discipline, but it can be done. And Alternatives for Girls is doing that with hundreds of girls, and it's very impressive. And I'm really moved by young Yaritza because now we're talking about preventing it from happening in the future. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking forward and we're saying, hey, we don't want this to right. be a life for any young girl. So if we can prevent now, then it's the best medicine for later. So it was an awesome show today. Absolutely. And we have an awesome year ahead. We have Mario Hemingway is going to be one of our guests. Yes, she is the literary giant Ernest Hemingway's granddaughter and she will be joining us right here on My Healthy Mind because she'll be in town for the Team Cares annual luncheon at the Henry on March 29th and she'll be talking about suicide prevention because tragically suicide is a legacy in the Hemingway family that she's working very aggressively as an activist and as an author to spread the word to prevent people from losing their loved ones to suicide. So. It's going to be a great event, Michael. Absolutely. We have a great year lined up to this time, so we want you to tune in every week and make sure you go to those to our website, MyHealthyMind.com. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook. Let us know what you want us to talk about on the show. We want to hear from you. And remember, no topic is off limits. This is a safe space to talk about anything. And we keep your information private. So thank you and join us next time on my